Hello there, welcome back to my channel. Today I am sharing a video that has been much anticipated and requested, and that is all about makeup brushes. Now I've done two of these videos, actually I think three of these videos in the past. I will link those down below. So I wanted to give you a different flavor and some updates because my preferences have changed and I have tried out new brushes, new brush brands. And so today I thought it would be fun to share with you the top brushes that I would run out and purchase tomorrow if I lost all of these brushes. If in one day, all of a sudden, all of my brushes were gone, here is what I would run out and purchase tomorrow. Now, as you will see, as we go forward in the video, they are a broad range of different brands. So I truly selected my top go-to brushes and there is a mixture of different brands. So because of that, I'm gonna do a part two to this video and I'm gonna share with you the differences between those brush brands. So if you're somebody who says, no, Shirley, I really like to just stick with one brush brand, it will maybe help you determine which one might be better suited for you. Now we have a lot of ground to cover, so if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and let's get started. Now before I jump into my top 20 brushes and a demo of each one because I will show you my full face of makeup, how I pulled it together using each one of these brushes. Before I get to that point, I just wanna share a couple of bullet points of information about brushes and how to choose the right brush for the task that you have at hand. If you're not new to makeup and brushes and you just say, Shirley, let's get to the top 20, I will leave a timestamp right here on the screen so you can fast forward to that point and we'll jump right in there. So before we do that though, for those of you who might not know a lot about makeup brushes and you look at all of these brushes and you're quite overwhelmed, let me just kind of boil it down to some basics. So the first thing that you're gonna look for when choosing a brush for the particular task is you're gonna think about the length of the brush, the size of the brush, and the density of the brush, okay? So let me just show you two different face brushes, all right? So if I want to apply bronzer or blush or powder to my face, and I don't want it to be in a very super concentrated section of the face, I'm going to choose a brush that has flexibility. Now, in that flexibility, there are lots of different versions and different variations of that. Now you can see this brush is super flexible and these bristles are quite long. This one, they're still flexible, but they're a little more dense. And then if I could go to an extreme example, you can see this brush, it's big, but look how dense those brush bristles are. And there's, there's flexibility, but I mean, all in all, the brush maintains its shape when you run your hand over it. So this, because it's so dense and huge, is going to actually give me the most density of product. So I would not want to use this with a very pigmented product because it's gonna pick up a ton of product and deposit all of that in one spot, it's gonna be really hard. So I would not use this for bronzer, but this would be a great brush. What I use this for is for powder foundation. Conversely, this brush, because it's so flexible and we have those really long bristles, when you glide this over your skin, you're gonna get a very light wash. So this is great for like a finishing powder. You can also use this if you're super fair skin and you're afraid of getting too much bronzer on your cheeks. You could use a brush like this and it's gonna apply it in a very light sheer manner. This one is kind of in between and this one's going to deposit a little more product than this, but because it's large and those bristles are longer, you can still buff it out. Now, just like that, when you're talking about eye makeup, the same concept comes into play. So if I want a sheer wash of color through the crease, I'll show you this in a moment, and I take a brush like this, Again, we're looking for flexibility. The shape of it is nice and rounded. That is gonna tell you that this brush is gonna be a good blending brush. It's going to deposit product, but it's not going to deposit it all at once and in a super concentrated manner. So I'm gonna go in with a real dark color right here, and I'm just gonna show you. Taking this dark shade on the back of my hand, if I put this on my hand with this brush in circular motions, you can see it's just a very diffused color that is deposited. So it's still depositing color, but it's very diffused. 
All right, now let's go to the opposite end. If I choose a brush like this, that is short, it's dense, and there's a little give in the bristles, but it's flat. If I go in with this brush and apply that same product, do you see the difference of how much pigmentation is deposited? All right, and even though this has a little flexibility, this is not going to blend. I mean, you could you could spend days blending, but do you see what a messy, awful blend that is compared to this one, all right? So blending brushes are rounded, fuller, and not super dense. The density of the brush will determine how much product is deposited. So there is a slight difference between these two, but not much. A flatter brush is good for laying down pigment. I'll show you this in the demo, but this is a great one if you just wanna pack on your eyeshadow, but not for blending. Now, as far as a thin brush, kind of like this, these are great liner brushes. So the shape of this being so pinched, this is not a blending brush per se. It is great for getting really close to your lashes for precision. So if I go into that same eyeshadow and apply this, you can see I can get a line of that shadow, but I'm not again going to be able to blend this out. Okay. So those are some distinct differences. Now a slightly puffier short bristle brush like this. I absolutely love this smudge brush. Again, same, same eyeshadow. If I apply that, you can see the difference between this and this line. This one, I can actually kind of gently diffuse and blend out, but this one is just going to be pretty much a line. Okay, so those are the basics. And then one other thing to consider is the size and how do you determine the size? Well, look at your eye size and shape because just to be a little bit funny about this, but you know, this brush versus this brush for an eye brush. I mean, you're not gonna go in with this brush and expect to get any amount of precision. In fact, you would probably have a hard time even keeping below your brow with a brush this big. Now that seems a little crazy, but for some people who have smaller eyes, this brush could kind of feel like that. So you're going to want to actually maybe choose a smaller type of crease brush. These are both from BK Beauty. So keep that in mind. Look at the size of your eye and the task that you want it to accomplish and then choose a brush accordingly. So rounded, a little bit of flexibility is going to be blending, flatter, and more dense is going to be for packing on pigment. And the same goes on the face. The rounder, fluffier brushes, we're going to get more diffused product. And then the more dense it is, or even a flat brush like this is going to be for more laying down the pigment. Okay, with all that being said, hopefully that's helpful. Now let's jump in to my top 20 brushes that I would run out and buy tomorrow if I lost all my brushes. All right, so for purposes of just keeping this a little more concise and easier, I am going to skip a little bit ahead in my demo to the part where I start my eye makeup. So we're gonna concentrate on the eye brushes first and then we'll go back to all the face brushes. So the very first brush, eye brush, that I would run out and purchase is my Sigma E50. This is a flat, dense brush and it is large. And I absolutely love this brush for applying my brow bone highlight shade. It's so fast and easy. When this brush is dirty and its backup is dirty and I have to use a smaller brush, I am reminded again how much quicker this makes that task. I also love this if I'm gonna do a quick like matte eye, maybe two, maybe one shade through the crease, I'll pack this under the brow, pack it on the lid, and then throw something in the crease, and it's really quick and easy. The second brush that I would run out and buy, and this is one of the least expensive brushes, but I just go back to it time and time again. I do have an alternative, I'll show you as well, but the Morphe M504, I have had this brush in my collection for I don't even know how long, and it's just perfect for my eye shape. I love this 
for applying a diffused color through the crease. It's also great for going back and blending that shadow after I've continued to deepen the color through the crease. This just lays down the product quickly and the bristles are pretty soft. They're not as soft as the next brush I'm showing you in the demo, which is the Rougher 15 Max. This is a very similar brush, but the bristles are way softer. So it's a little denser though, so it does apply a little more product at once. So even though this is a very similar brush, I love it for adding just a little more pigment through that crease and deepening the crease. And yet it still has that rounded edge and allows me to continue to blend up and blend those colors. The next brush that I absolutely love, and again, these are not steps that I do every day, but if I'm gonna do a full face of makeup and a full eye look, these are all of the brushes that I would need to complete that or that I would like to have to complete that. Let me rephrase that. All right, the next one is the rougher number one brush. Now this one is slightly pinched, yet it's still a little bit fluffy, but we have long bristles. So if you're thinking about what I told you at the beginning, the slightly pinched and slightly less rounded and less full, it's gonna give us more pigment, but it's longer bristles so I can still blend and blend on the outer corner and blend through the crease because it's pinched it also is the perfect shape to drag through the crease and just do any extra blending i love to take this through at the end after i've done my shimmer shade on the lid it just really helps diffuse that line I absolutely love this brush. Now next is a brush that I have had this size and style of brush in my collection since my first purchase of Sigma brushes. Now this one is a special edition handle, but this is the E55 from Sigma. This brush is shorter and much smaller than the E50. So you can see size-wise the comparison there. So obviously it's the same shape and the same kind of fluffiness and you can use it for the same thing but because this is so much smaller you can be a lot more precise so i could use this under the brow and if i had smaller eyes this would be enough this is actually what i used to use way back when before my e50 and it works fine it just takes a little more time but i love this now to pack on shimmer shade on the lid because of the density of the bristles it picks up a good amount of that shadow and then you can place it. This brush works similarly to using your finger. Now some shadows you still have to use your finger to get the pigment payoff on your lid but this works very similarly and it allows you to have that precise control of where you actually put it. Now another similar brush which you might be thinking well Shirley couldn't you use one of these for both tasks? Yes you could but I love the E60 which is longer bristles and actually even flatter. Let me show you. I love this brush which is actually supposed to be a concealer brush. I love this brush for when I want to wet my brush and apply a wet eyeshadow or pigment to my lid. This one I like to do that with because I feel like it's thinner and it's a little easier to clean up later on and I don't know I just like having a separate brush for when I want to wet my pigment wet the eyelid versus just put on a dry pigment. So the E60 another one that I just would have to put back in my collection. Now, if you've watched many of my eyeshadow tutorials, I'm sure this next brush will not come as a surprise. If I wear eyeliner or I want a smudged liner look or I want to deepen the outer corner just right there on the edge, I just have to bring in the BK Beauty 204 brush. This is the brush that I feel like was a game changer for me. Before I had this brush, I tried a couple of other brushes that kind of worked, but I struggled. And then this brush came along and it made all the difference. If you like a diffused look of liner, whether you're just working with shadow or as I'm showing you, I'm blending out kind of the liner that I've put down and then topping that liner with shadow, this is the brush for you. Not only are these bristles just tightly packed and it's rounded, so it makes it perfect 
just to get into small areas. You can pack on the shadow, blend it, but it's super soft. It is not scratchy at all. And I just love having a brush like this that you can use close to the lash line. Get that diffused look. It works with cream shadows or powder shadows, eyeliner, whatever you is your favorite product to use. This is the brush for you. Now, likewise, another brush that I literally, even if I'm doing a super light look on the eyes, I am typically bringing in this brush. Now, in the next segment, I'm gonna show you some alternatives to each one of these brushes, but this one has just been my go-to, the E15 from Sigma. Again, this is a limited edition handle here, but they have this in their regular line. Now, this is the brush that I also demoed for you at the beginning, and this one, due to its thinness and its precise edge is perfect for liner super close to your lash line. Now, there are a lot of liner brushes out there. I have tons. I have tons of angled liner brushes, other good ones, but this is the one. This is the one that beats them all out for me because you can get precisely to the lash line, but these bristles are so soft. There is no scratchiness and yet, it's not a flimsy brush. Sometimes brushes like this, if they're soft, they are not firm enough to actually blend out liner. But this one is soft enough that you can blend out. Now, why I personally use this on my lower lash line is because it's not fluffy and therefore I don't get any kick up of shadow into my eyes because I wear contacts, that is a huge problem. So if I were to go in, even with this brush, which a lot of people use this brush on the lower lash line, and it gives a beautiful diffused look, but I can't do that because it will kick up a little bit too much shadow, and that just always ends up in my eyes. But this brush, you're able to just press it right under the lash line and press that shadow in, and I just absolutely love this. Can't do an eye look without it. Now the last eye brush comes at the end of my routine usually. I'll throw it in here so you're gonna see like almost all my makeup on. That is the Sigma E30. Again, another brush that I had in my very first set I ever bought from Sigma. And you might be surprised because in a weird way, this one is a pointed brush that seems a little bit prickly. So I don't like this brush for blending out liner on the outer edge but I love it for the inner corner. I have just not found another brush quite like this with the point on there, the length of it. And I typically will start off with my finger applying the inner corner highlight. And then I go in with this brush and it's just the perfect shape to blend out that inner corner highlight, to blend it up towards the crease of my eye. And again, it's probably just because I got in the habit of using it all those years ago, I don't know, 12, 14 years ago, whenever it was. This is my first pencil brush and it's still one that I plan to keep in my collection at all times. Let's talk face brushes. The first face brush, I mean, literally the first face brush I would go out and repurchase is the BK Beauty 101. Let me show you a clean one so I can talk about it. So the 101 brush, it is, I think a brush that started a new trend and I'll show you a couple of other variations later, but this angle and the density of the brush of the bristles, yet the softness, this brush just is so perfect in so many ways for foundation application because of the angle. And we have these thinner, this kind of a thinner top here. It allows you to kind of brush that foundation on to get it spread out. But then you can go back in and pack in the foundation in areas maybe where you need more coverage or you just need to kind of press it into certain areas. You're able to do that. You can also kind of use this as a buffing brush. I just absolutely love this brush. And this brush works with almost all of my foundations. There's one I think most of you will know that I like another brush for, I'll share that in a moment. But for the most part, if you're putting on basically anything from a tinted moisturizer to a more full coverage foundation, this is a great brush. The next brush, and I put this in with my face brushes, is my concealer brush. And I have another brush I'll show you that I also like, but the first concealer brush I would repurchase is the A506. 
again, another kind of groundbreaking shape and philosophy I think that so many other brands have now copied. This small, I think some people have referred to it as the kit and paw brush, and I think that's appropriately named, but it's just the perfect size. It's not too small. I had struggled before trying to use eyeshadow brushes as concealer brushes, or you get some that are just huge and you can't quite fit them under your eyes. This is perfect. And for similar reasons as the foundation brush, because you can kind of gently spread the product, but then you can also press in the concealer without losing coverage. So when I'm applying concealer, I want it spread out, but I don't want to lose coverage. And this brush allows me to do just that. Now, as I show you the rest of my face brushes, keep in mind, I don't always do a cream bronzer and a powder bronzer, a cream contour, powder contour, etc. But when I was considering what brushes I would run out and buy, I would buy a brush that I would use for cream and powder because that's just how I roll. Not every day do I wanna just use a powder blush. Sometimes I wanna use a cream brush, blush. So I wanted to show all of those brushes and I'll show you each layer. I have one of those products on for each of these brushes. So the next brush is the Dalton Sculpt Brush, the dual ended sculpting brush. I love this brush. I love actually the small end for applying one of my favorite foundations. But in today's demo, I'm showing you another way I love to use this shape brush and it is to apply cream highlighter or liquid highlighter to the tops of the cheeks. Again, similar to the concealer brush, this shape is just perfect for, you can kind of gently spread the product, but then you can also pat it on. So you're not losing pigmentation, but it allows you to kind of drag the product where you need to. It's small enough to where you can work in smaller sections of your face versus the foundation brush. I mean, this would be a little much if I'm trying to just put highlighter right on the tops of the cheeks. So love that. And then I absolutely love the other end of the brush for cream bronzer. And I'm using the Dalton Serum Bronzer in this demo. And I just feel like this shape of this brush just fits perfectly. If you struggle to keep your bronzer high enough in the right place, this is a great brush to help you do that. So I just love how quick and easy it applies the product. It's slightly dense, but it still has give. So it doesn't pick up too much of the product. I mean, if you swirled this in the bronzer, you would get too much product, but it allows you just to tap in, tap that bronzer on, get the perfect application. You can do it not only your cheeks, but up around the hairline, the chin line, etc. Now for cream contour, and that is for me, I like to get into the hollows of the cheek, around the hairline, the jawline, Still my favorite go-to brush is the BK Beauty 107. This brush just does it all. Now you can see this one is bigger, obviously, than this one and a different shape. So instead of not having any bristles on this side like this one does, this has bristles on both sides, but it kind of goes up to a point. And what that allows me to do is get that contour right into the hollows of the cheeks but then because it's rounded on each side it's also helping to diffuse it and blend it just by me tapping that brush when you're applying cream products on top of foundation it's really important not to do a bunch of swirls with your brush because you're going to possibly disturb the foundation underneath so this brush it just does the work for you just by tapping, 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 and you can see it's blending it out. It also is the perfect shape. You can just lay this right on your forehead if you wanted to, to blend out the contour up there. You can get on the jawline and it blends it out. I just absolutely cannot be without this brush. For cream blush, this brush, it took me a while to try it for this because I was afraid to use this brush with a cream product. I thought, for sure, it would stain the brush. It would never apply it the way I wanted to. But once I used this brush for cream blush, say that 10 times, I never went back. <laughs> this is the rougher number four brush. So this one is angled and it's slightly smaller than a lot of blush brushes. So I don't like this one actually for powder blush because I feel like I can get a little too much product but with cream blush, this is perfect. Now in the demo, I am actually dipping directly into this Dalton Cheek 
cream cheek product because I know I can just tap this brush in, tap it on my cheeks. Again, a brush that does the work for me. I don't have to swirl it. But also this works well if you have a really pigmented blush and you wanna work from the back of your hand, you can swirl it into the back of your hand and then apply it to your cheeks. And it just diffuses the blush perfectly and it washes completely clean. So I don't wash my brushes necessarily every week like I should, but even by leaving blush pigment on my brush, it still washes out. So I've been so impressed, love this brush. Now we're moving into powder products. So the brushes that I love to use for powders. All right, underneath the eyes and my highlighter brush, I could do interchangeably between either of these brushes, but because I've been using one for highlighter and one for powder under the brush, under the eyes, I didn't wanna get them confused and change them up today. So in the demo, I'm using the BK Beauty 108 brush. Now I have another brush that I use all the time, but it's not made anymore. So I couldn't run out and repurchase it. This is the brush I would replace it with. And this is rounded. It is slightly dense, but as you can see, like it allows the powder to just kind of fluff out of it. So it's not going to pack on the powder. It's going to apply it, but you're also going to be able to blend it out under the eyes. So I like to have less powder under the eyes, but I still need some. And also that point allows me to get up close to the lashes and get as much of that concealer set as possible. Now, before we get to that highlighter brush, let's go to powder contour. And again, I don't always do, I usually don't actually do powder contour if I've already done cream, but for the sake of this video, if I'm doing powder contour, the rougher number five brush is my favorite. Now you will note that the shape of this brush is very similar. I just, for whatever reason, prefer this one with powders and the point though is still kind of there. And then because we have those kind of rounded bristles or the bristles kind of gently slope down on either side, it allows me to blend out that contour, but without it getting too far up my cheek or down my cheek, because we don't want to end up looking like we have a beard, <laughs> a five o'clock shadow, right? This also is perfect to do kind of under the chin, along the hairline, all of that. And again, another brush that washes completely clean. Love it. For bronzer, I just keep going back to this brush. I have several other brushes that are large that I could use for this task, but I always go back to this one. It's the BK Beauty 103 brush. Again, if you've seen my makeup tutorials, you've seen all these brushes, I know you have. And this brush is kind of like the older sister, the bigger sister of this cream bronzer. So similar shape, just a lot fluffier, longer bristles here. So this one is going to give me a much more diffused bronzer look and I love this with powder bronzer. I love to use it like with a mixture of a finishing powder and bronzer like I'm showing you, but this just fits so nicely along the top of the cheek. Because it's large, it gets this task done really quickly. It also fits really nice along the hairline, the temple area, just anywhere that you want to add bronzer. And it just does a great job of blending out and diffusing that bronzer so you don't get too much product on your face all at once. For blush, for powdered blush, I talked about this in a recent video. This is my favorite brush, but you can't get it anymore. I don't know why this was a Morphe E4. For some reason, they stopped making this brush. So in today's video, my alternative brush, if I lost that one, would be the Sigma F40. It is very similar, similar in shape, obviously, or basically the same shape. It's just maybe a little, a little stiffer in the bristle, maybe than this one is. This one has maybe a little more uh, give to it and a little bit fuller, but all in all, this is pretty much the same brush and I do love this brush. And what I love about an angled brush for blush is again, I feel like this gives me a little more control. Blushes can be quite pigmented and so I want to have a little more precision with where I'm placing my blush. I'm not one who actually looks very good with tons of blush all over her cheek. 
So if you're somebody who loves that, you could use a bigger brush, but I like to have control of exactly where I'm putting my blush, especially if I'm using something like I did today, the first blush that has a little bit of glow to it because I like to keep that off of my pore area right here and just kind of back towards the cheek. And this brush, again, allows you to kind of tap it in. You could even buff it if you wanted to, but you really don't need to. And you can kind of pick up the pigment slowly and build it on your cheeks. So absolutely love the F40. The final face brush, I already mentioned, but it is the counter to the BK Beauty 108, and it's the rougher number 18. Now they make a slightly bigger brush, which is the 19. <laughs> you can see it there. But again, kind of like with the blush, when I'm applying highlighter, I like to know that I can be a little more precise with where I put it. And the shape of this brush, the flexibility of the bristles, yet there are enough bristles that they can pick up a decent amount. It allows me to just tap in that highlight on the tops of the cheeks, bridge of the nose, cupid's bow, wherever I want to add highlight and it's super, super soft. Now, if I'm doing cream contour on the nose, and actually these brushes will work for powder contour as well. I've kind of been rotating between these three brushes, but the main one that I think I'm gravitating to more, and I feel like this one has a little more flexibility in how you use it and preci precision and blending ability, and that is the BK Beauty Nikki LaRose N16 brush. It took me quite a long time to get my hands on this brush. It sells out all the time, but this one is really unique. If you can see the bristles, do not all go to the end. So the end, you'll see like these bristles that it makes it look like it needs a haircut. But because of that, those bristles that are sticking out help you apply a more diffused amount of the product. So if it's super dense there at the end, like I have an eye brush that, do you see this? Same shape, but it's dense all the way there. It's going to apply a lot more pigment all at once, whereas this one, it looks a little more like a duo fiber brush that has long and short bristles in it. And so it allows you to just diffuse the product and blend it, yet you're still keeping some pigment there, but you're still able to make it look more soft and blended. So I have really enjoyed this for the side of my nose. Now on the other side, I did go in with an alternative, the BK Beauty 205 brush. Now this one's dense, but it's angled, so it allows me to kind of pull that contour into the hollow of my eye there, just right kind of in the corner there. So this is also a great one. I actually prefer the 205 for powder contour because it does pick up maybe just a little more product than this one does. But either one of these, but I have been going to the N16 more recently. Now, I just wanna add a couple of honorable mentions, right? <laughs> And that would be the BK Beauty 113. This was my favorite brush to apply my Dalton Mushroom, Rishi Mushroom Skin Genius Foundation before I found this brush. But this is a great brush for kind of more thinner foundations that you just want to really spread out. I also love using this brush to apply my L'Oreal foundation. This helps you if you're trying not to apply too much foundation. This, believe it or not, allows you to spread it out a little bit more and then you can go back in and you can like tap in in a few areas that you need more coverage but the 113 is another brush that if i were doing a second purchase this would be like round two purchases this would be in there and then another brush that i would love to have if i lost it would be the sigma this is the f72 and there are a couple of brands. I have actually two others that are very similar, but this is my favorite. And this is good for applying concealer, but I feel like this like really packs it on. But I love to use this for concealer on the eyelid, but I don't wear concealer on my eyelid all the time. So that's why I could skip it for now. But the bristles are super soft, they're dense, and the size of this brush just really makes it a quick and easy process to apply and then blend it out at the same time. So again, that's the F72. Now, the last thing I wanna mention is you probably noticed I did not include a big fluffy powder brush for powdering my whole face. And that is truly because I just 
use these on a regular basis. So these are powder puffs, you can get them on Amazon. So that's why you didn't see a brush specifically for all over face powder. All right, so now you know what my top 20 are. But now stay tuned for the next section because I feel like this will be helpful for you in making your purchase decision to know which brand might be right for you. And within each brand, I will include an alternative to my favorite brush. So for example, if I'm showing something in BK Beauty, but you want to purchase rougher brushes, I will show you the comparable brushes in each one of those brands. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure you check the description box down below. I will have links to all of these brushes as well as links to those previous brush videos and I'll see you in part two. Bye.